how do you deal with such a situation where the need for um, a new policy direction is now, but the data that is required for that policy direction to support it is not there and would maybe need some months to a year or so to generate. I'm a pharmacist and I'm a professor of pharmaceutical chemistry and pharmacokinetics from the University of Ibado originally where I have done a lot of my work teaching and research and I rose up to being director dean head of department sub dean head of many um, units and departments and faculties but in the past one and a half years I was um, selected as a vice chancellor mm -hmm. of a private university, Christland University. Mm -hmm. So I operate within the two universities. Mm -hmm. I'm on leave like a rent uh, to okay. Christland to university, university, University of Akuta. Uh, right yes. yes, so I do research, I do administration. Mm -hmm. So you have been part of this workshop uh, yes. that is seeking to get more top scholars on the continent yes. to also play a big role in institutionalizing the use of research and other evidence in decision making. Right. Um, and this workshop has been on over the last three days. You know, what one thing would you say you are taking away from this workshop? Yes, um, before I came, I didn't quite understand um, the, um, e what EIDM, yes. the um, evidence-informed decision-making yeah. was, yes. you know. So this workshop has given me a proper definition mm -hmm. and description mm -hmm. of what EIDM is mm -hmm. and how we can use it to translate our research, you know. I am a proponent of what I call town and gown. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a proponent of carrying out research that's yes makes impact. University of Ibado, I set up a center for drug discovery, mm -hmm. development and production, mm -hmm. when I won one million dollars wow. to set it up as a center of excellence. Wow. And the goal yeah. is to turn our research mm -hmm. to blessings, mm -hmm. to product, mm -hmm. to meet the needs of the people, yeah. to, provide, yeah, to right. provide access to quality medicines. Yeah you know, through capacity building and doing meaningful research. Mm -hmm. So um, this workshop has now shown me, I always see government as being up there. Mm -hmm. I really, when it comes to government issues, I chicken out. Mm -hmm. It's like they're not reachable. I don't even know how to engage them, yeah. you know. So yeah. this has shown me that there are tools, there are mechanisms, there are models that you can use to engage policy making people yeah I've had to deal with them but you yeah. know it takes forever yeah. you yeah. know but with this I can start by training uh, I mean 
younger colleagues and colleagues as well, and then involving the government. And I think the position I hold now also yeah. takes me closer to them. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So the, the workshop has opened my eyes right. to see that it is doable. Right. It's not that difficult. Right. We've seen case studies. Right. And so I have hope that I can do it. That's really, that's really good. Um, so do you have any one thing um, that you would take away that you think you can apply to your work or your country? Yes. Uh, coming out of what has been discussed in this yes. workshop? Yes. The first thing is to, um, I've already tied that out, is to hold a meeting since it's a, a small university so it's easy yeah. hold um, a, a, a step down meeting or seminar with um, the lecturers i have maybe get one or two of them to buy in and then hold, we know we usually have seminars right. for the academic staff right. and probably in a day or so share um, what i've learned yeah. and then from them form a cohort of um, EIDM, whatever, coach or champions amongst them so that we can tackle an issue that I presented and that is how do we tackle drug and substance abuse yeah. in tertiary institutions. That's one thing I would like to do. Okay. I will also, we've been talking with the Nigerians here, I mean, the very first day I said, no, we must have something in West Africa or Nigeria mm -hmm. and we've, we've been meeting. So we zeroed in on having um, a Nigerian or West African engagement network. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. So, and uh, we already we've already formed our platform here. That's we're really already good. talking. Yes. We'll take it some of the ideas. Yes, I shared it with them, and it was also good that one or two others had similar ideas. So yeah. we all came together. That's really good. Yes. Finally, when you think about this workshop uh, broadly beyond what you would do or what you and your colleagues would do uh, from here, how do you see this kind of uh, work contributing to? How can they? How can it better contribute to uh, capacity development, you know, in Africa for evidence use within government or universities? Okay, um, like you know, the director just spoke, mm -hmm. I, I I took something from that mm -hmm. that we can um, um, provide information, do more research on EIDM, uh, publish them, so that they become uh, like. Uh, references yeah. or you can use them to build curriculum and then I know you already have models yeah. but by the time we start utilizing we have more case studies yeah. Yeah. we have more body of knowledge let me just yeah building more body of knowledge mm -hmm. on EIDM in Africa and using it to for capacity building not only for university people but for policy uh, policy makers and you know among the university you have it, some of them in political science yeah. they you know their voices are heard, are heard so yeah. one can use that I, and I like what I call multidisciplinary research mm -hmm. you know so where you have both the, I'm a scientist I'm a pharmacist I'm a medical person so where we can use uh, expertise from those people to yeah. also help us engage yeah. government to do uh, carry out capacity building. Yeah. You know, you've talked about cafes, you've talked about things like that. Mm -hmm. So that capacity building needs to be there in the university so that it doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've talked about having it in our postgraduate programs. Right. Right. Um, even we can use it for me, I believe that as we train people, we can use it as part of promotion guidelines. Yes, you entrench it, uh, entrench it in, well. in our research manif uh, management offices. Yeah. I mentioned that during the course of the meeting. Yeah. We can entrench it if you're submitting grants, we have it as checklist. Yeah. This thing you're doing, how do you want to implement it? Yeah. Now, how do you want, uh, you know, and it will also help us do better research. For you to provide evidence, you must have validated. Very good research. Yes, so for me, the there are many thing. things I've discovered which you, I validate and validate. When you are now sure yeah. that this is what it is, yeah. then you take it up to for uptake. So we should do more uh, uh, training, I mean, get more training models, mm -hmm. both from AFIDE and from our own experiences. Mm -hmm. We can float even journals yeah. for African yeah. EID. Yes, there's none, so that we encourage people to publish those. Well, yeah. all, all those information would be used for capacity building. Because yeah. I think your question it's is addressing good. capacity building. Yes. Yes. And then if we do pilot studies with policymakers, we can publish them. Absolutely. 
So you use that to show the policymakers, yeah. we've done this with this government or with this and it worked. Mm -hmm. And this is an evidence. Yeah. And then you continue to train. To me, training um, should be continuous. Yeah. That's the only way this thing can be sustainable. Yeah, it, 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 it be sustainable through training and then stretching it in training students, especially postgraduate students, mm -hmm. and trenching it in, in grant writing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and trenching it in um, in promotion. Yeah. yeah, you know, so that way it becomes a culture. Yeah, and it doesn't die. Say if you leave, it yeah. continues. It's continuous. Part of the, the and even if the terminologies change, we change. Like you're talking about D and P, we keep changing.